Welcome back boys and girls and today we're gonna talk about whitetails. Now I've been hunting whitetails for past 15 years and I've done my fair share of studying that and they're actually really fun to hunt and they're very smart and they're really good to eat and it is actually it is actually the most popular uh, large game hunt in USA. So let's talk about whitetails. Unlike other deer, whitetail thrives among people. So when you see a deer in your backyard, it's very, very likely it's a whitetail. Now, it doesn't mean they're stupid among people. They're able to thrive among us because they're very smart, very cautious, and they know where to be. In fact, when you see a deer in your backyard, you're thinking, oh, it must be easy to hunt them. But if you actually go into their territory in the woods, not even far from your own home, and when they see something or when they smell something in their territory, they become super cautious and hunting them is not easy as you think. Also, they're safe and great to eat. Safe in a way like bears and wild hogs, they have parasite that could affect human. Now, most deer do not have that parasite. In fact, all the chefs who cook venison will recommend to have it in medium rare. And that's the best way to go. And cows have what they call a mad cow disease and it could affect human and it can be deadly. Now, deer, they have something similar to mad cow disease, which is CWD, chronic wasting disease. It's deadly to deer, but not to human because it does not transmit to human. We have complete different DNA. Now, some other scientists are arguing it could mutate and be transmitted to human. Well, this if can go on forever, but it hasn't mutated yet, and I'm not worried about it at this time. And it is great to eat in a way most hunters would consider whitetail as a delicacy. They're really juicy, they're really good to eat, and it's great to eat because venisons are very high in protein and very low in fat. Matter of fact, they are rated as one of the top uh, best red meat out there. Now, we could talk about whitetail all night, and we could argue about it all night. And I guarantee you one night is not going to be enough. But today I'm just going to go over the very basic uh, knowledge of whitetail so the beginners can start hunting. Whitetail's greatest weapon against hunters are sense of smell, sense of hearing, and their sight in that order. So to catch a whitetail, you have to become orderless, silent, and invisible. Let's talk about how. As I mentioned before, their sense of smell is better than dogs and their sense of uh, smell is about up to a thousand times more accurate than humans. And in fact, when they travel, they're always facing the wind to know what they have in front of them. Now, they're most afraid of human body odor. Yep, it's a perspiration. Now, if you sweat a lot, that's going to create bacteria and they form certain smell and they're afraid of that. So you want to make sure you don't have that bacteria growing in your body by using this sand killer. They, they will actually kill the bacteria, so you will reduce the smell a lot. And you want to make sure you take a shower, not before, better yet, in the morning of the hunt, because your hair contains a lot of sweat and a lot of odor. So you want to make sure you take a shower. And even with, and you want to spray this on every hunting clothes, including your boots and stuff. But as for the outer garment and, and for the hunting boots, I actually put them on when I get to the hunting ground, because in the process of wearing it into the car and moving, that could also catch some smell. So this stuff, you got to use it for sure. Whenever you're going to woods, you have to make sure you spray this stuff on the sole of your boots. Because, and also try to avoid stepping on the actual game trail. Because they're always traveling that trail and they're smelling up and down. They're smelling for different deers. They're smelling for uh, predators like us. So you want to make sure when you walk into the woods, Spray this on your boots and also walk maybe 5 to 10 feet aside from trail. It is so much easier to walk on the actual trail, but that's the best way to get yourself busted and have them change their uh, route. Night before the hunt, I even spray this on the car seat and also the floor mat. Avoid filling up your gas tank night before the hunt or the morning of the hunt. And if you have to, wear different shoes getting into the gas station. Also, wearing a sandlock outer garment will also help. Now, you still have to play the wind. You have to be very cautious of the wind direction. And also, as I mentioned before, in the morning, using a tree stand 
and if you're about 20 feet above the ground and all the air is lifting up and you could become odorless. It's the same spot last time. Because I have already shut my nose. It gets a pass again. Now, let's talk about their hearing. They don't have a super hearing power like their smelling sense, but with a pair of ears that moves like a radar, they could tell where the sound came from and how far it came from. In Virginia, it is impossible to get to your tree without making any noise. With all the dry leaves on the ground, every step is crunch, crunch, crunch. And when you get to your tree, you can't climb your tree without making any noise. So I'm very sure as I'm walking into my tree stand, I am busting every deer that's already there. So I'm not even worried about that. But I try to get there as fast as I can, but very carefully, and then get ready as soon as possible. That way, after the woods comes down, I have different deers moving in. Once I'm up on my tree stand and ready, I actually have my rifle on the shooting rest and ready for deer to come out. Now, if I see a deer come out, I don't have to do this. I just have to go behind my rifle and then find the deer and pull the trigger. Because if you see a deer and if you panic, sometimes even a small noise from your jacket or if you small tap of your rifle on the shooting rest, anything, when they're close up, they're gonna hear you and they're gonna run. In fact, even now, when I'm up in my trees and before the deer actually shows up, I practice shouldering my rifles in different directions without making any noise. That way, when the deers do show up, I can follow my steps without going into the chaotic mode. Now, let's talk about their vision. Now, there are three things you should know about deer vision. Number one, well, there's a debate about this, whether they are colorblind or not, but what they're saying is that deer cannot distinguish between red and green. So a lot of people wear orange into the woods, but a lot of times when you have a solid color, and, that, and I've told you this before, and when you move, they could catch the movement really quick. So usually when I'm up in the tree stand, I like to have my orange cap on the side of my tree stand where it could be visible everywhere, so it's legal. But actually wear a camouflage cap on top, so even with a small, very small, slow movement, they really can't catch you. And number two is that uh, they have a great night vision. So that's why they are nocturnal. So they like to move around in the night, and they actually go to bed in the morning. And then they get up in the late evening before uh, before sunset and then they go out feeding again. And number three is that because their eyes are on the side of their head and they are uh, protruded, they have 210 degree of vision. So even though they can't really tell exactly what, what, what the movement was, but because they have such a wide vision, if they're walking and if, you, and, and if there's something moving from any side of their head, they can actually detect the movement. So they will stop and try to figure out where the uh, movement came from or if they could hear anything. Now I see two doors coming in from my right. Uh, times like this, you don't want to move too fast. You just want to stay still and watch. There she is. Now if you jump for your gun, they're going to bust you and run. So if possible, you want to hide yourself behind even a small tree like this. And behind the tree, you want to get your rifle ready. Some people think deer has a poor eyesight. That's not true. They have a very good eyesight. They might not be able to tell the color difference in certain colors, but they actually have a very good eyesight. So when you open your tree stand, you have to wear your face mask and try to conceal, conceal your eyes and become invisible. Whitetails are also homebody, meaning they don't travel very far. Most whitetails in their lifetime, they don't live within three miles of their radius. Now, some bucks during the rut season, they will travel much further distance to find a dog, but in most cases, they're homebody. What that means is that if you see a deer and if you get busted, don't get too discouraged. They're going to hang around. They might change their pattern. So you might want to change your pattern as well. So for me, every two or three years, I would actually change the location of my tree stand so that I know the deers are not aware of where I'm sitting. Okay, so this is a view from the new location and we can see across the creek, nice open area over there. 
So that's about a good 100 yards. So we have, you know, we're going to see a lot of deers moving through there, hopefully. As I mentioned, deer are nocturnal, meaning they like to go out in the night and feed and come into the bedding in the morning. So best time to hunt is 30 minutes before sunrise and about two hours after the sunrise. So you want to be there ready when they're coming to their bedding. It is now 7.05. Matt. And the second best time is right at the sunset. So they're actually sleeping all day and then they and then they get up before the sun uh, sunset and then they go back out feeding again. So best time in the afternoon is about one hour before the uh, sunset. But the real prime time is about 30 minutes before and 30 minutes after the sunset. The advantage of hunting in the evening is that it gets dark pretty fast. So if you don't make the really good shot, there's a good chance you might actually never find the deer. Oh, she dropped on the track. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Okay, now it's 5.42 and I got out just in time before it got too dark. And that's actually a good size though. They also like to move in colder days. In my personal experience, I've seen them moving a lot in a high 20s and low 30s. Now, I heard some of the hunters are saying that some, some of the big bugs, they really like to move really, really cold morning, like single digit. I don't know if that's the uh the territory difference but in virginia what i felt like was that you know real cold move you know real cold mornings or real cold day i don't see a lot of movements uh, it's usually around 30 degrees the best time that they like to move they also like to move right before the rain or snow or right after the rain and snow especially after the snow i get excited And lastly, like always, thank God for what you have. Enjoy your life with what you got. But mostly remember, knowledge is power. See you.